This review is brought to you in part by Dean's Hobby Stop in Owasso, Michigan. Dean's has one of the Midwest's largest selections of used kits at great prices. They also feature new kits and supplies as well. Call Dean's to get their mail order list featuring hundreds of vintage kits or check their website for great deals on both new and classic models. Thanks for joining us at Right On Replicas where we bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the release of the Kenworth W900 Wrecker 125 scale Revell model kit number 85-2510. This is a re-release and although it's not really described as such it's a two-in-one kit. You could also just build it as a day cab as those parts are included from previous runs. Now Revell states this is a level 5 for advanced builders and it contains 411 pieces molded in white, chrome, clear and vinyl and has chain and cording. The decals are water slide and have sharp color quality. The instruction sheets typical Revell style book and this is previously released and can be found in several uh, releases in the past. This kit is unchanged except for the decals which have been improved. Now for the build you get a really detailed motor uh, and chassis that needs full assembly. The interior is well detailed and the dash is a decal which makes that easy. The cab and the hood are solid parts, but the wrecker bed needs full assembly too. This is a complex build that requires time for part assemblies to, to dry, and you have to take your time in order to get it done right. Overall, the finished dimensions are 14 inches in length, 4 and 7 16 inches wide, and 6 inches high. When this kit was first released, uh, it was missing one of the sprues. So, they issued a warning and information regarding how to get that replaced and as it see, you see it here you can call that number and they'll direct you to the correct place to get a new uh, set of sprues uh, for parts 172 to 274. So if you're buying a used kit you won't know whether or not you got one of the earlier ones or not so right away you should take a look at this to see if they're in the box. Here is what the missing sprue tree looks like. If you don't have one, give them a call and they'll get you one. Here are the decals for this kit. As you can see, they're very colorful and the registry is good. I strongly recommend using some decal setting solution to make it fit those contours. But as always, use the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines when using any of the products mentioned here in the review for your own protection. For most of the construction, I use Model Master liquid cement and sometimes a slow setting tube glue, but other adhesives are used too for strength like super glue and white glue for clear parts. Mostly the paints are Tamiya acrylic bottle paints that are shot through an airbrush or rattle can paints that can be used for things like primers. Construction will be done in two phases. First is the overall tractor and then the assembly of the wrecker bed. The chassis starts the build with and it's done in multiple stages prior to painting. A few parts are left unassembled and painted and then added, but a majority of it can be built and painted semi-gloss black. Start with the frame rails and add the radiator support and motor mount. Assemble the axle cross member parts now. Add the three center cross members and the axle cross members into place. Make sure you attach them and keep them straight. Then the directions are kind of unclear as to the specific locations, but there are holes in the frame rails for attachment. The front suspension can be assembled partially and some parts left off to paint later, but with uh, raw plastic you get a better uh, bond. So add the leaf springs, axle and steering box, assemble the brakes and brake actuators and install those onto the axle. Paint the power steering reservoir and tie rod gunmetal and the fuel filters are white with steel and the shocks are yellow. Gather up the rear suspension parts and install the cab cross member Install the four airbag supports, assemble and add the front axle, inserting the drive shaft into it, and assemble and add the rear axle, installing the drive shaft into it. Now add the torsion bar, add the brake actuators to the brakes, and install one on each axle, and paint the shocks yellow. The whole chassis can be painted semi-gloss black. Now add the front shocks into place, install the fuel filters, power steering reservoir, and the tie rod. Add the rear shocks to the torsion bar and frame and decals 18 
and both of 19 are used on the frame here. Now pull out the parts for the motor and it can be partially assembled prior to painting for a better finish. Assemble the block, front and transmission end. Assemble the turbine. And the directions have callouts for different colors of metals. So I used steel, aluminum, gunmetal, flat black, black, orange and copper for the various uh, items and painted different parts of the motor as needed. The starter is black and the oil filters are orange. The water takes, uh, intakes are steel and the transmission gunmetal. Uh, decals 22 are used on the valve covers. Install the water distributor and then the heads. Add the alternator in the belt. Add the blower body turbine, turbocharger mount and air compressor too. Now test fit the mounting position, scrape off any extra paint and mount the motor to the frame. Use these parts to assemble the radiator, fan and top and paint the unit flat black. Assemble the exhaust tube and paint it chrome. Paint the drive shaft flat black and install the drive shaft and the exhaust tube from the underside. Add the radiator to the mount. Insert the lenses into the bumper and install the bumper onto the frame. Assemble the battery box sides and bottom and paint it chrome. Add the steps and install it onto the frame. The fuel tank has always been an issue for modelers with this Ravel kit because the parting line runs transversely through the center of it. I recommend replacement with an aftermarket one or you can put the thing together, fill the gap and smooth it over and then have it re-chromed or repaint it with something like Alclad. So paint the tank mount and exhaust mount flat black and install it onto the frame. Then add the tank into place. The interior tub now can be painted flat black on the outside and the inside would be any interior color you choose. I used a tan and a brown combination. Paint the door handles and some of the bolt trim aluminum and paint the seats and armrests the corresponding color. The uh, shifter is black as are the pedals and I did the floor with a 50-50 mix of flat black and thinner over the tan to give it a kind of a mottled look. Uh, add the seats and the armrests then add the pedal and the shifter. To add some realism to the kit I found some logos online for the Kenworth truck and printed them out on a color printer and some paper and then cut out the paper to make floor mats for my cab. Most of the dashboard features come from decals. I did the dash uh, with a tan color uh, with some detail painting and then I added decals uh, 15, 16, 20 and 21. The column is flat black and the wheel is brown and aluminum. Add the wheel to the column and insert that into place into the interior tub location. Then add the dash to the interior tub. We'll assemble some parts to the cab and before painting. So look through the instructions to see what you'll need. Uh, the cab, the visor, the back wall, the filter mounts and the filters in the firewall. Plus uh, you'll do the hood at this time to match the cab. And the hood has inner panels to install. This old mold has some serious li uh, parting lines here on the roof and the corners to remove and shows its age as an older design. I had to use a, a flexi file and some sandpaper because uh, it, it comes off pretty easy but you need to watch those contours. Assemble the filters, install the back wall and the visor on the cab and slide the firewall in place unglued then attach the filter mounts on the cab. On the hood add the inner panels. Wet sand the whole cab and the hood with some uh, fine grit sandpaper then rinse and let dry and use a good quality primer to coat the inside and outside of the parts. After the primer is dry, wet sand the parts again with some fine grit sandpaper, rinse and dry. Then choose a color for your build. Paint the parts completely and let the paint cure. I used an automotive paint that was just a mix of colors. After the base coat has cured, you can decal your body using plenty of warm water Make sure that you start with the larger or more delicate decals first and I strongly recommend the use of some setting solutions to help them adhere and, and follow body contours. The only parts on the body that uh, needed some chrome were the straps on the filters. So I used some foil here and applied it like tape and then trimmed off the excess with a sharp hobby knife. I got out the window glass and dipped it into some of the uh, pledge floor polish 
and then wicked off the excess and let it dry for a clean, clear look. Then, after that was dry, I used some white glue to install the windows into the cab. After the windows have dried into place, flip it over and install the interior tub into the cab. Glue the windshield wipers into place. Install the cab onto the frame by using the front tabs and then onto the back wall. Using these parts, assemble the air tube and paint it chrome with flat black trim, then supports are aluminum. Install the filters with the chrome filter covers, then add the air tube and attach from each filter to the turbine. Install the supports from the firewall to the center of the radiator. Assemble the exhaust pipes, paint them chrome and flat black, and insert them in place from the exhaust and mount on the cab. These cab accessories are added next. I used some of the thick super glue for a little extra setting time to assemble these parts. First assemble the stacks on the driver's side and add the grab bar. Install the stacks onto the truck cab and exhaust. Install the lenses in the spotlights and add those to the cab. Paint the drive light lenses transparent yellow and add to the bezels. Then install all five on the roof with your choice of round or square horns. Add the door handles. Install the mirrors on both sides as follows. Install the bottom frame, then the top frame. Add the mirror, add the brace, and then lastly add the antenna. Now I'll use these parts to finish the hood. Paint the grill with a black wash of 50-50 paint and thinner. And then add the windscreen and the emblem. Install that onto the hood. Insert the headlight lenses into the bezels with some white glue and install those into the hood. Then add the lens to the front markers and paint them transparent yellow. Add those to the hood now and add the lenses to both sides of the blinkers and paint those transparent yellow, adding them to the hood. Now add the logos to the hood at this time and paint the hood hinges flat black and slide them onto the pins in the grill. Now glue the hinges to the frame. Now you can add the optional light bar, paint the lens transparent yellow, some of the legs to the base and then add the rotators into the base. Add the lens and lastly add the center cover. Install this onto the cab roof. Gather the tires and rims and we'll do the front tires first. Paint the hub and the rim back aluminum and to give it a used look roll the tread on some fine sandpaper. Roughens it up makes it look used. Install the rim front into the tire and add the rim back. The hub is left loose and only glued to the axle so that the truck will roll. Now build the rear tires in the same fashion. Uh, the rims are different though. Assemble the rear rim and the center ring and add the hub into place. Then paint four units aluminum. Insert a tire over the rear rims. Insert the front rims into the tires and glue onto the center ring. Then add the optional hub covers if you want. Install the front tires onto the axle and then install a set of tires onto each axle in the rear. Your model will be taking shape at this point. You should have a rolling chassis and the cab is finished. This would be the base of a, a day cab build if you just built that. The parts for the day cab are included in the box. So these are the parts that you would use to create a regular semi without a sleeper. But for the wrecker build, you would uh, discard these parts, put them in your uh, parts stash. If you, but if you wanted them to build the day cab, this is what you'd need to complete the build. Now phase two will start the build of the wrecker body. We begin the second phase uh, building the wrecker deck by adding the center brace from these pieces on the underside. Then add the side walls, then the front, and then the back walls. Pull out these parts to build the upper cabinets by adding the thin long walls and thin short ends to both front corners. Add the top, then on the back add the boom supports to both sides. On the underside, build the lower cabinets by adding the sides and the ends with the bottoms. Then install the control cover boxes on both sides. Add the outrigger retainer halves. We'll use a similar process to before with the um, cab. Now we wet sand the bed with some 800 grit paper to clean it up and then prime it and wet sand it again with uh, a fine sandpaper 
uh, let it dry, and then use the same color as the cab to paint the complete bed. Um, get the decals ready for the sides using some setting solution and plenty of warm water. And in picture 71, the decal is shown to be too big here and needs to be trimmed to fit. So I cut straight at the door line at the front of the door and over both wheel wells and then I trimmed as needed when the decal started to dry. Paint the slam lock silver and clear coat the bed and I taped off and only cleared the sides and the toolboxes leaving the bed floor a flat color. Pull out the chrome pieces for the bed then add the diamond plate to the floor the short grab bars go to the top of the toolboxes and the long grab bars are on the sides of the bed. Eight of the ten lights are red and two are white. The white ones go on the top of the toolboxes and the rest are installed on the sides back and insides of the bed. Paint the insides of one set of lenses red and the other ones stay clear. Now the red go on the top and the clear on the bottom of the chrome plates and the plates are installed on the back of the bed with a set of red square lights. Assemble the boom and paint it black. The pins are steel. Now slide the boom into place and hold it with the pins only gluing the tip to allow the boom to continue to operate. Assemble the cylinder housing prior to painting. Assemble the base plate and the left outer wall, housing top and back, the left side, center and right side supports, the right outer wall and then the housing backing plate. Assemble the cylinders with the chrome rams and tape off the rams for painting. Paint the housing, cylinders and cylinder mount bar the color of your choice. I used a silver to offset the darker body. Insert the cylinders with the mount bar only gluing the bar's ends. Paint the hydraulic hoses black and steel and install on the cylinders. Mount the completed unit into the bed. The crane portion is built in stages and painted as a whole when finished and assembled. Start with the center section, assemble the boom and add the cable support and guide. Assemble the main boom first, add the counter plates to the sides and the cable supports to the top, then assemble the pivot housing and attach it, then add the pivot brackets and guide cover. Gather these parts and assemble two each of the pulleys. Assemble the wheel, the sheave cover, and the sheave support. Assemble the two cable housings. Assemble the middle housing. Assemble the housing front, middle, back, and cable housings and pulleys into two units. Assemble the boom and attach the cable housing. Now assemble the pivot pin. Paint all of the crane parts, pivot pin, ram pins, the matching color of the cylinder housing. Then add the decals to the main boom sides. Final assembly includes attaching the main boom with a pivot pin and both ram pins. Insert the center boom into the main boom and then the housing boom into the center boom. Gather these parts to assemble the winch housing sides back and front rails. Then add the supports. Paint this unit the color of the crane and add the lights and paint the lenses area red. Assemble two winches. Attach the cable guards to the main bar and paint this unit steel. Wrap about 60 inches of the supplied thread around each bar. Paint the remaining part steel. Assemble the motor prior to paint and attach the cable into the housings without glue. Then add the crossbars. Install the motors and add the winches inside the winch housing. I use some tape to keep my thread in place during assembly. Use some super glue to attach the crane and winch housing in place on the bed of the wrecker. Using these parts, assemble the rear support legs and paint them flat black. Install them into place. Install the levers into the lever pockets. Add the lenses to the spotlights and add the lights to the winch housing. Paint the hook steel and feed the cable through the cable housing and over the pulleys through the sheave support and tie the hooks in place. Now add the loose chain in the bed open spot. Scrape the contact points clean if you need to and install the bed onto the frame. Assembly is final and you've got an impressive and massive looking Kenworth record to display on your shelf. Here's a front and back view so you should see something just about the same. 
you'll end up with some extra parts and uh, decals for this uh, to create the regular semi truck plus a sleeper roof uh, and the floor of another type of truck uh, plus extra fuel tanks and steps to make a long haul rig that were included in this kit. Overall, Revell did a marvelous job bringing this model back uh, with the exception of the missing sprue tree from the early shipment kits but they have fixed that issue too just call them for a replacement but it's really uh, the fact that there were no issues at all the fit and finish was really on par with more expensive kits uh, at a great price point you get a wonderful looking model uh, that builds up very easily um, and was for a semi that's really unusual the frame was straight, had no twists uh, in it, and the motor detail was crisp, but the parts weren't overbearing, uh, and so detailing is not a big chore. The interior was well done uh, with dash decals, and otherwise it was quite sparse and basic, just like the 70s quilted pattern interiors. Uh, the cab fit was very straight, the hood fit without issue, uh, and the wrecker assembly, although it looks complicated and there's a lot of parts if you just follow the steps or our instructions here, uh, she comes together very nicely. Uh, there were no build issues overall with the entire kit. Uh, it had a high parts count and quality construction, so uh, I think that they did a wonderful job and you'll get your money's worth with this one. We hope you like this premium quality step-by-step -step review and so that you don't miss any more please subscribe to our YouTube channel but you can find us on Facebook and also at our website www.writeonreplicas.com Thanks!